Hello, I'm Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland. This is Video Voters Guide. Our goal is to help the voters be well informed about the candidates and the issues in this year's election. Here today, we have Kathleen Taylor running for Senate District 21. Welcome, Kathleen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Glad to have you. Can you tell us about your background? Uh, you've come from the House of Representatives. What, what do you plan to bring to the Senate? Well, I, yes, I'm currently the state representative for House District 41, and that is part of Southeast Portland, Milwaukee, and Oak Grove, and I'm currently a freshman there. And as you probably know, Senator Rosenbaum has decided not to seek re-election, and this is giving me that opportunity to run for that seat. My colleague, Representative Nose, decided not to run for the Senate, so I am uh, now the person in the race for that seat, and what I'm hoping to bring to the Senate is to continue the work that I've done on the House side. I was, I felt that things went well for me. Uh, almost all of my bills passed during the long session. And then in the short session, I feel that, um, that things went well for me overall again. And I was very proud to be part of our caucus on the House side. We passed some pretty significant pieces of legislation and it was just very exciting and thrilling and something I was very proud of. And I'm looking forward to, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected to the Senate, that this particular area of Southeast Portland, Milwaukee and Oak Grove that I would represent is more, one of the more progressive areas of the state. And I'm looking forward to representing those, those constituents and bringing our, those values uh, to the Senate. Terrific. So. Uh, what are some of the specific issues that concern that constituency? Well, right now, you perhaps have seen in the media that we're having an air quality Indeed. issue. And so right now, I am working on a daily basis with a very long list of folks. The governor's office, DEQ, I happen to be on the House side currently, the co-chair of Ways and Means of Natural Resources, and DEQ is one of those agencies mm -hmm. that's under that. And so we are working with, again, Governor's Office, DEQ, OHA, many advocacy groups, I won't list them all, and then the neighborhood associations, of course, and then the businesses also, trying to work through what needs to happen at this point. And so I would say today is that is probably the biggest issue in, um, in Senate District 21. In addition, there are a, a host of things. Our, my constituents, I feel, are very concerned about public schools. They, want, they don't feel that the funding has gone back up to the level where it should be. They are also concerned about some very specific things, such as Powell Boulevard. It is one of the highest, you know, there's a high, not only crash rate, but a lot of deaths occur on Highway 26 there on Powell. So there's some very specific, you know, projects that people want addressed and taken, taken on. Um, Milwaukee is changing considerably, right? It's being gentrified and we wanna make certain that that happens in a way that we don't leave out populations unintentionally. So there, those are just, I can go on and on, but those are some of the, some of the things that are happening in our area, so. Thank you, that's very helpful. Uh, what do you think that the legislature can do in job creation and to support economic development for Oregon? Well, I, one, our, in Oregon, we have a serious problem with our infrastructure. It's falling apart considerably. And we have a lot of folks who are currently trained and ready to go that can do these jobs. So I see that as a perfect match. And so I think investing, the state investing in public infrastructure projects would be a wise use of dollars. And there would be a lot of benefits regarding jobs things that are outside of those types of jobs, we can, um, frankly, we need to improve the education system so that folks want to bring businesses here. People want to have their you know, businesses located in a place where they know that there is a qualified workforce ready to go. It doesn't just happen overnight. We need to make a more serious investment in the K through 12 and in the higher education system so that when investments uh, investment when businesses are deciding, oh, do I want to expand or move to Oregon or, some, or start new here in Oregon, that we are ready to um, give them a workforce that is qualified and, and ready to go. 
that's basically, I think, probably the most significant thing that we can do Thank to help you. that happen. Do you want to talk at all about the Oregon tax structure? Are there a couple of things you would do to change it if you had the power to do so? Uh, well, if I were queen or had the sure. power to, if I were queen to do that, the, um, well, my background is I uh, worked as a management auditor. So I most recently worked in the Secretary of State's Audits Division and have worked at the City of Portland Metro and Multnomah County. And in my work, um, I have worked on economic development audits and work related to that. And I've learned about the tax structures in different states. And one state that comes to mind is Virginia. And I, although I'm not an expert and I'm, uh, I'm not a tax expert, in, for example, in Virginia, they have what is considered pretty much an average tax across the board. So they have an average of the income, property, sales, et cetera. And so when the recession hit in 08, research shows that they were not impacted as negatively as a state, for example, as Oregon was, where we're too dependent on too few sources of revenue. Mm -hmm. So that when there's ups and downs in the market, then you can go somewhere else to get a source of revenue rather than we have a very narrow, we have very few places where we can, where we get revenue in order to operate for the, for the state for operating dollars. So I would, if I truly had my way, I would have revenue reform and I would do something more like in Virginia and some other states have this too, where you have more of an average tax rate across a broader set of things so that you're not so dependent on just income tax, for example, the way that Oregon is. Did I not hear the word sales tax? Well, I do think that having a, um, an average tax, I'm not opposed to having a sales tax if it was drafted appropriately and it was used, for example, I would want, if, if we were to ever have a sales tax, I would want it to have be so that food and clothing were exempt, things like that, which they have in many states. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then there would be a whole conversation about whether or not it would be dedicated a certain way, how what the mechanism would be for increasing it. I understand people's concerns. They fe fear that if it was implemented that it would just go up and up and up and up. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. We could control that. So Thank you. I want to remind voters that the last day to register is April 26th. Ballots must be mailed or delivered by May 17th. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen.